Hello and welcome back. Welcome to my 12 month, 12,000 kilometer review of the Honda CRF 300 Rally. Just going to take time in this short video just to let you know what it's like living with the Honda 300 Rally, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what's broken, and how I find it after 12 months of use. So let's get into it. First question I get is, how's the bike been? Have you had any issues with it? Have you had any problems? And the answer to that is, the bike's been great. I've had zero problems with it. There's people out there that have done more kilometers in a year, more kilometers on their bike, probably a lot more. I don't think there's anyone out there that's given their bike a harder time than I have. I've loaded it up, I've taken it through the desert, I've raced it, I've crashed it, I ride it hard every day, and nothing's gone wrong. It's Honda. It starts every time, it does what I want it to do, it's just been great. So for any naysayers out there that say, it's only a little bike, it can't do anything, have a look at my other videos. It's done everything, and I haven't had a problem with it. Yes, it does have some performance mods. It has CBR 300 cam, some airbox mods, inlet mods, and a matching 550 performance tune. But that's how I like to ride. I like to ride probably a little bit faster than most. I like to ride in the mid to top range, probably more in the mid range. Um, so that's how I've got the bike set up. Some people have reported having clutch problems with them. Some people are swapping out the clutches for CBR clutches or CRF250 uh, clutches on the older rallies. Uh, this bike's got the slipper clutch, slipper clutch. I've had no problems with it. This is still my standard clutch. I've beat the heck out of it, I've taken it through the desert, I've raced it. Standard clutch is still working fine for me. So I can't say what's happened to those other people, but I've had no problem with the standard clutch. So for me, the Honda reliability is one of the reasons why I got this bike. Um, and it's, for me, it's lived up to its reputation. A quick rundown of what mods I've done to the bike. Besides the performance mods, the rest of the mods are pretty much just comfort mods. So I've got a Seat Concepts comfort seat. I've got a mesh cover on it. I've got Pro Taper bars in the Henry Reed bend. I've got Pro Grip soft rubber grips on there. I've got some uh, added bar weights just to keep the vibrations down. It pretty much gets rid of all the vibrations on the freeway. I've got bark busters on there. I've got a bash plate. Uh, biggest mod's probably my uh, tower that I put on for racing so I could have all my rally gear on there. Now it's stripped back for what I call adventure mode, just minimalistic with everything I need there. Tell me what's going on, on the bike, what speed I'm going, and to navigate and it's in a really neat package. For anyone doing any serious riding, suspension setup is where you need to spend a little bit of money. So there's plenty of people out there that do suspension setup. Mine was set up by a local suspension tuner and it's been awesome. So if you're gonna use your bike loaded up or a bit of a, a quicker pace than just cruising, definitely get your suspension done. Uh, the bike's much more enjoyable and much safer. I've got my little bag on the back so that's my my sort of day day bag i've got um what do i have in here i've got my tools i've got two tubes i've got a little electric pump i've got a first aid kit um that's pretty much it so that sits on the back if i'm just doing a day ride that sits on the back if i'm doing anything more than a day ride or camping i've got other luggage that i throw on uh, this setup works really well it's out of the way. I don't like keeping too much stuff on me or my bag. I do carry a backpack with some water, um, a couple of little things in there, but I like to keep all the weight off me. And this is what I find works really well. All right, as you may be able to see, uh, I've given this bike a hard time and it does show some scars of 12 months of hard riding and a few crashes. So in my rally racing career, which I got second by the way, uh, I did have a crash, I hit a fence, and you can see the results of that. There's some scratches where the fence went across here, um, and I hit the deck. That's probably some amount of what happened in that crash. So just basically the 
hitting a wire fence did most of the damage. Uh, some of the other scratches you can see around here, here and here. From my last video where it was supposed to be an easy ride but it was anything but an easy ride. So we did cop a little bit of damage and scratches from that. But I accept that it's a dirt bike. I use it hard. It's going to pay. It's going to pay you some penalty with a little bit of cosmetic scratching. But nothing's broken. Nothing stopped working so it's going great. Uh, I've gone through a fair few sets of tyres in the last 12 months. I pulled the stock ones off pretty quickly and I went to some Michelin Starcross 5 tyres. And I used them for the desert and I really rated them. They worked awesome for the desert. I did about 5,000 Ks on them, never had a problem. Michelin have now changed to a Starcross 6. Those 5s I used in the soft compound. Michelin's now gone to a Starcross 6 and instead of having soft, medium and hard, they have soft, medium or medium, hard. So I tried soft, medium. And while they did work well in the dirt, I found they wore quicker than this old Starcross 5 softs on the road. So what I'm trying now, just spooned on a set of Dunlop 952s. So these tyres have been around for a long time and I've run them probably 15 years ago on my old XR650 and they used to last a while on the XR650. So I'm expecting good things for them on the little CRF 300 rally. Uh, so far, this is my first ride with them, just done road Ks to get here. A little bit of bush track there. I can't really comment yet, but so far so good. I'm more concerned about the durability over performance. So I need them to perform to some extent. I need them to be good off-road, but for me, because I do a lot of kilometers, I need them to be able to be durable and handle the road, handle the very conditions from rocks to sand, mud. So I'll give these a workout and we'll see what happens. I'll report back in a little while. I've got some rides coming up, so hopefully I'll be able to report back soon. But there we go, I've got the Dunlop 952. I've got a 120 width here with the Dunlop 952, and they must measure their tires a little bit differently because it's not too wide. It actually looks good. It suits the bike, I think. And as you can see, I've still got a little bit of talcum powder on there for when I put them on. But yeah. Very happy with them so far on the road. That's the front. Front looks good, performs and handles quite nicely on the road. Let's see how, how it wears. I have been told, I'm not sure if it's true, but I have been told these are the same compound as the Dunlop 606, which do wear really well. Uh, one of the biggest changes for me, I have a 15 tooth front sprocket. If I run 15, 40 and that gives me a slightly taller gearing so that's with my setup that's how I like my gearing it gives me nice spread of power puts me in the torque band pretty much everywhere so what is this torque band I thought I'd just stop and explain it for you so you can see here this is a dyno readout from 550 performance with a CBR 300 cam inlet mods and the 550 performance tune you can see here that torque band that I'm talking about is right here. We are at maximum torque and your power is still increasing. So from just after 5,000 revs up to 8,000 RPM. That's the torque band and that's where I like to ride. You've always got power for overtaking for hills and it just makes life a lot easier and more enjoyable. Now with my gearing and performance mods, people always ask me, what does it sit at on the freeway? How many revs are you doing at 100 kilometers an hour? Okay, well, I'm going to use this graph to show you. So at 100 kilometers an hour, I'm at 6,000 RPM. 110 kilometers an hour, 6,500 RPM. And at 120 kilometers an hour, I'm sitting on 7,000 RPM. So you can see with my gearing, I'm still in the middle of that torque curve at all those speeds and I've got power to overtake, the bike's got power and everything just works really well. That's pretty much it for my review. The bike works awesome, I've had no dramas, there's nothing more to say. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Test, test, test one, two. This is my bike over here, some stuff. This is a bag. Got the 
fuel tank. All right. 